Hey there, it's Will. I thought I would talk about the markets, um, a follow-up on the last video I did. Um, and uh, But first, let's just talk about Hertz. Uh, there's been a lot of people buying this, especially on Robinhood. And the point of my doing these videos is just to kind of tell you what I, how I think, how I look at things with the, um, the charts instead of just buying like based on feeling and rumors and stuff. And um, a lot of people try to buy value, like they think that something's been knocked down a lot and they want to get in on it. So that's like um, cruise ships, airlines, banks, oil and gas, stuff like that. And if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that the, the charts sort of support that uh, uptrend is, is how I look at it. So instead of buying and holding and going through a lot of periods of down, um, you know, downtrends and, and just waiting for it to come back, um, even if you like something longer term, you can buy and just ride kind of the trends. So buying a, a stock like Hertz is pretty risky because when you when you have bankruptcy going on, um, if it does go, I don't I don't want to get into too much of this, but it, if it does go bankrupt, bankrupt, you're, you're not going to get any any money uh, from your shares. It usually goes to bondholders first. So, but if you're just buying it to trade, if you look at this chart, um, the things that I look at is the eight EMA. So you have and I look at trends, so you have this downtrend here. So if you were in this downtrend at any point in time, I generally wouldn't be buying, and most of it's below the ADMA here. There's a couple of pop-ups here, but you wanna break that downtrend. And then, so there might have been a short-term opportunity with these gaps like this to get in, but once you see um, it, it closed here and it gaps down here, um, and with such a huge, like a one day gain here of 60%, I mean, you know, things are crazy when you're getting that type of return. So as soon as you see a gap down, you probably want to get out right there. But now we're in this continuing, um, you know, downtrend again. So you definitely don't want to be buying this uh, stock. And so, and, and while I'm talking about Hertz, I just want to talk about Nat that I've been talking about before. So there was an opportunity back here. You can see it's in an uptrend and it's above the ADMA, this black T line. And then like I, I did quite a few videos where I said you, sh you probably shouldn't be buying. So there might have been some of you that were like buying and holding, hoping that it was going to go back up when um, all the oil had to be stored in tankers and stuff. And um, but I, I mentioned quite a few times that, um, you know, we're in a downtrend. We're below the eight EMA. And even if you get a little pop up like here, it's not a close. Um, it actually closed down here. So when, right here, there was a potential for things to kind of come back. Um, so you see this pop up, but like I said, when you see a gap down like this, especially this one, and you're down below the ADMA, if you held it that long, you would definitely get out right here. And now you're still in a downtrend again. So this whole thing is pretty much, you know, a big downtrend like this. If you draw a bigger one, um, so you definitely don't want to be getting involved in that. Um, but let's go back to the markets. So we have... I look at a few different ones, the Russell 2000, but mostly Dow, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. So you can see we have this downtrend here, but we also have a longer, a little bit of longer term uptrend. And once you break through that, it, there's a chance that it's going to keep going down. So you're not sure, is it going to, it's kind of a wedge. It's either going to go up or down. So it kind of squeezes. When you have something going down and up, there's a chance for some sort of a squeeze and a breakout up or down. So you don't really know what's going to happen. So today we've had a pretty bad day again. I mentioned in the last video that it was looking not too good because you have an island um, reversal where you have a gap up, some, some candles, and then a gap down. So these four candles are kind of up on like an island sort of thing. And you also have higher, um, lower highs. So you kind of hit a high, you went up, and then you came back down. So you've reached a lower high, which is a bad sign in terms of a trend. So... Um, but because you had this little bit of a longer term uptrend here, um, you know, you're not quite hundred percent sure, but that was a bad sign. If we look at the Dow, same scenario, but we've broken through the, uh, the uptrend here. And we like the same thing. We have lower, lower highs. And once you get like, once you're down below this ADMA, the T line, um, it's definitely a bad thing to, to be, you know, getting involved in. But because the 50 MA is here, it's a moving average, 50 day moving average. You want to see if it's going to bounce and support off that 50 M, um, moving average. So just because you're going down doesn't mean, you know, it's going to go down a lot. But, um, you know, we've had quite a, quite a big gain from 
the uh, low on March 23rd. So if I draw a line from here to here at the peak, you know, we're 46, 50% area. Um, so, you know, this is looking um, like a downtrend, but like I said, the 50 is right there. And before I go to the NASDAQ, I'll look at the S&P 500. So it's very similar. 50 MA is below and close here. So we could be bouncing off either the 200 or the 50 and have support there, but we're not, you know, we're not quite sure. And then finally, the, you know, the strongest one has obviously been the NASDAQ. And we're above the 50 and the 200 here. But we did have uh, a, an evening star pattern right here, which is, you know, um, a bullish candle, a gap up, a sort of a, a doji, and then a, a big candle down that, you know, goes about 50% or more down towards uh, this candle here. So we, and we're, and we're we uh, popped up yesterday, but now we're down below the ADMA again, but we are still in an uptrend in terms of the longer uptrend here. But, and this was actually a higher high here. So the NASDAQ generally looks better, obviously, um, than the other two. But as you know, like when there was the crash in um, February, you know, everything went down. So if there's another big turn, like right now you've got most of the indexes going down except for NASDAQ. So people still think, you know, the tech is doing okay because cloud services and online shopping and stuff. So we'll have to see, but um, that's been the big, the big gainer. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. Um, you know, I did mention that uh, things weren't looking too good in previous videos. And you can see, like I said, the downtrend here. And now we've broken that. So, you know, it's not, it's not great. But even, even on days uh, where it's flat, like in the last week or so, or down, in a downtrend, there have been people making money on, uh, sh you know, stocks. Um, and, and that's been like biotech and things like that. There's a one called Workhorse. It's a auto manufacturer. So you can see how much that's gone up. There's um, BCLI, which is a lot of biotechs. You know, they've done, it's up 12% today. Um, you know, I'm just going through some of this list of uptrending stocks, LPSN, live person. So there's definitely stocks individually that are going up. It's a bit risky or a bit, you know, going against the trend when you're buying in a down market or, um, you know, a flat market as well. But basically there is uh, opportunities here if you're, you know, if you're willing to um, look at those and buy those when you have sort of a down trending market here. So hope that helps. I just want to give you kind of an idea of, you know, what I do and what I would suggest for you guys. If you want to pick up TC2000, uh, I've got a free, a link to a free trial down below and you can get $25 off if you end up purchasing it. This is great, a great charting and scanning program for watch lists and everything. There's also a link to a candlestick forum, which is where I, I learn, um, you know, how to trade using candlestick patterns and, and charts and stuff like that. Uh, all the different signals that um, that the candles kind of provide to help you uh, trade. And there's also a course on uh, swing trading. And uh, all those links are below in the description. So check that out and we'll talk to you in the next video.